That's awesome. We want to say welcome to you, uh, online crowd, West St. John, Halifax, Charlottetown. We love you guys. I mean, we're with you guys in Halifax. I know it's rough right now with all the restrictions and things like that, but we love you guys very much. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today, aren't we, guys? If that's, yeah. if that's cool with you, even if it's not cool with you, actually, we're going to do it anyway. But it's too late now. That ship, that ship has sailed, baby. But uh, you know, typically when we do our messages and our sermons, they're more of a, you know, a monologue and a teaching, and there's lots of slides and different things like that, and you kind of sit and you absorb, and that's amazing. But today we're going to make it just a little bit more conversational and try that a little bit today, all right? So just, just lean in with us no matter where you're at, and uh, I've got my, my bro, my bro Himes here today, my, sure. my brothers, <laughs> my friends. That's Hebrew. I had to work some Hebrew in there somewhere, right? Yes. My friends, uh, esteemed, esteemed colleagues. Um, more than that, though, friends, really trusted friends and valued friends here today. Uh, Pastor Dan Lamas, Pastor Anthony Moore. And I'm Pastor Andy Broad, if we haven't met. And uh, we've been in this series for the last, the last several weeks now called As For Me and My House. And it is, it is a sermon series, but it's really also a season that we feel like we're in as a church and as a family. Amen? And uh, just we're, we're doing some very foundational work in this season and really taking some time to, to do a little bit of inventory about who we are as a church and as a people and also taking some time to clarify really who it is that God has called us to be as his people and as King's Church. Amen? And uh, we know there's a lot of things about our world right now. There's a lot of things about our lives that are, are some pretty big question marks that are out there, kind of wondering, you know, how, how things are going to look and, and restrictions and then the pandemic and all of that. But we know that we serve a God who, who isn't wondering what's going on, amen, that he's always had a plan, that he has a specific call to his, to his capital C church, the, 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 the big church, we call it sometimes, and then also to King's Church and our role and how we fit into that community. And so, so we, are, uh, we are deadly serious, deadly, deadly serious about laying some foundational work about who it is that God has really called us to, like what, what is it? That, that is supposed to mark us and set us apart from the rest of the world. And, uh, you know, we're believing that there are, there are greater things yet to come, amen, and that God is going to do an amazing and an incredible and an powerful work. But there's, there's a foundation that we have to set here right now in this season where we're at as a church or we're not going to be sustained for future growth, right? Like, how many of you guys know, if you don't get the foundation right, the whole thing is going to come crumbling down. And uh, so we're doing some foundational work. We're like wisecracks. That company goes in and like sort of works on the foundation and like shores things up. That's kind of what we're trying to do in this season. And, uh, you know, just like Joshua, where he said, as for me and my house, we will choose to serve the Lord. Like, you can look around. There's all sorts of cultural ideologies and ideas and concepts and things that you could attach your life to, gods that you could choose to worship. And in this season, we're saying, as for me in my house, we will choose to serve the Lord. And uh, we've been talking about, you know, concepts like prayer uh, from Pastor Brent a couple weeks ago. And with Pastor Bradford did an amazing job last week talking about honor and the concept of honor and how we walk that out as a church, as a church family. And uh, this is Pentecost Sunday, right guys? Yes, it is. One of our favorite Sundays yeah. of the year. And uh, so we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today. You guys good with that? Anybody like the Holy Spirit out there? All right, that's good. They clapped. So if, you, if you didn't clap, you had to leave, okay? Because the Holy Spirit's ki kind of important. And uh, we've got a code here that we, that we live by at King's Church, and a piece of that code, and I think we've got it there for you, says this, just very simply, that the Holy Spirit is the power at work in us to live the kingdom life, and apart from him, we can do nothing. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And so we're going to spend some time having a conversation here this morning. Our goal is not necessarily to talk about who the Holy Spirit is because we just don't have time in one message to do that. Like he's a part of the Trinity. We just sang it. And that song, King of Kings, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is a part of that, that Trinity. But what we really want to focus on today is how we walk with and how we interact with and live in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. If he is the gift that has been left with us and he resides in us as followers of Jesus, as kingdom people, as church people, then what does it look like for us to walk and step and in tandem with him and live that out? So that's really, that's really our goal here today, right guys? And uh, yes. we're going to get there. But even as we just begin to dive in, I just want Anthony's going to lead us in just a prayer of, of invitation here this morning. And we're going to have, we're going to have an opportunity, spoiler alert, all right? Spo anybody like spoilers? If you don't like spoilers, plug your ears. But spoiler alert, we're going to have an opportunity here at the end of our time together this morning to, to pray that we would all be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And we're going to talk about for the next few moments what that would look like. But we just want to pray right now that the Holy Spirit would even just begin to move and to guide our conversation today and to begin to soften our hearts and draw us, draw us to himself. So, yeah, yeah let's do it. Thanks, Andy. Um, can we just all, I uh, wonder if we could all just close our eyes and just put your hearts in a posture to, re- to receive. Just put your, your, maybe put your hands out in front just as a physical sign of surrender and desire to receive. Um, I just really, uh, I just want to say this, that I feel like the Holy Spirit is going to begin to introduce himself to people today in a brand new way. And as you wait, even maybe as we're talking, you may actually begin to feel some physical manifestations, whether that's heat, whether that's electricity, whether that's tears. So we wait on you, Holy Spirit. We say, come, have your way in this people, Lord. That you are moving across the earth and you haven't forgotten us here where we are. And we bless you We honor your presence, living God. Come this morning, make a mockery of the wisdom of man. And just reveal to us how foolish the wisdom of man is in light of the wisdom of God. We bless your name. We welcome you here. Amen. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. As for me and my house, guys, we will, we will live by the Spirit. Amen? And Amen. Uh, that's our goal here today, that we would all be able to say that. And if you can't say that as uh, someone who calls King's Church home, then that's a problem. And you're going to have to figure that out, okay? Because this is who God is calling us to be as a church and as a, as a family and a community. And so we want to, I feel like we're just beginning to, to uh, you know, dip our toes in the pool of what it means to actually be, be flowing in the Holy Spirit. We are a very Holy Spirit-fueled church, obviously, but we believe that there's more, and there's more that God has for us in that, and that's what we want to kind of explore, explore together. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to I turn it over to you guys to be able to, for you guys to share a little bit of like, your experiences, maybe a little bit of your, your past kind of interactions with the Holy Spirit, what's led you, what's led, what's led the two of you, Dan Lamus and Anthony Moore, to be the kind of guys that when we want to talk about the Holy Spirit, they're like, oh, we need those guys, we need those guys to share with us and share their heart because of what what God's done. And we know that, we know and we understand. I don't, I don't think, I could be wrong, I don't think there's any of us that call King's Church home that, you know, wouldn't acknowledge and say that, yes, the Holy Spirit is a very important part of my life and a very key part of my life, and I need him and I invite him and I desire him to be involved. But sometimes we tend to put earthly parameters around what that relationship could actually look like. Yeah. Don't we? Yeah. What do you guys think yeah, of that? Yeah, we do. Go, go down. Oh, all right, I'll jump in. Um, so my story with the Holy Spirit is that I have, I have known about Jesus literally my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell people I started attending church in diapers, and I'm probably going to stop attending church in diapers. <laughs> that's good. I, <laughs> thank that's you. Really, that's thank really you. good, Dan. Thank you. Um, but for me, I've, I've known about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit literally my whole life. And I would say before, you know, I put over my whole story with the Holy Spirit is, uh, I would say it's a process of me coming to understand the Holy Spirit wants to dwell with me and in me far more than I want him. Like that was yeah. the big learning for me over my life. 
uh, was his desire for me was far greater than my desire for him. It took me a long time to figure that out. But he passionately desires my life. And I'm still, work- honestly, I'm still working that one out. But that's been a big learning for me. So for me, um, I wanted to mention two paintings that hung in our church building when I was growing up. Nice. One of them hung on the back of the platform, uh, and it was the picture of Jesus standing at the door and knocking. Anybody had else had that one hanging? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, that yeah. real classic. That was always, and my dad was the pastor, so I spent a lot of time staring at that painting rather than listening to my dad. Yeah. Jesus was Swedish in mine, too, that we had in my church. He was. In that painting, by the way, yeah. <laughs> Blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> oh, that's flowing, good. Flowing luscious locks. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that, Andy. Sorry. I appreciate it distracting <laughs> I me. Totally that's just good. Swedish the Jesus. That's there. good. Um, the other painting was uh, hung in my dad's study. Back in the day, we'd call the pastor's office the pastor's mm-hmm. study. Yep. And in my dad's study would, was hanging this picture of a young man... Uh, sailing a boat. He's behind one of those classic uh, wheels of a boat. And behind him, Jesus was standing, and he was in the middle of a storm, and Jesus was standing behind him with his hand on the young man's shoulder. And the painting was very threatening and very close up, and I would ponder those things. I didn't realize those paintings were working their way into my story with the Holy Spirit. But really, they did. And As an 18, 19-year-old, I landed in Bible college really completely fed up with religion. I had gotten a perspective of what church life was and what knowing Jesus was all about was sort of a plastic experience. Whether or not people meant to teach me that, that's what I picked up. So I I had this prayer. I don't recommend this prayer to anybody, but it definitely reflected my heart. I remember praying as an 18-year-old going off to Bible college. I am so numb right now, God. I can't feel you. I can't sense you. I've resisted your drawing for so long. I, my, all of my spiritual senses are like calloused. Mm. But I want to tell you this, God. If you can't show me something better than what I've been looking at for the last several years of my life, I'd rather go to hell than have that. So I don't recommend that prayer necessarily. <laughs> but you need to pray a real prayer. Yeah, that's and there comes real. a time in your life when you're going to pray a real prayer. Mm. And that was mine. And I, uh, and I wanted to say that over, over the next months, Jesus did show me something real. Obviously, I'm sitting here right now. Mm. And so praise God. He showed me he was real. Mm. And it was worth, worth giving my life to. But to get to the point, because I want to give Anthony a chance to talk. <laughs> to get to the point, uh, I was sitting in chapel about six months into that, that year of Bible college. And the preacher was talking about how the Holy Spirit was moving all around you. The wind of the Holy Spirit was moving all around you. And all you really need to do is put your sails up. Mm-hmm. And that clicked for me. And I remembered that painting of that young man in that storm with Jesus with his hand on his shoulder, and I realized, God, that is my answer right there. If I'm willing to put the sails of my life up, I'm gonna move with your Holy Spirit. Mm. And literally, that night, everything changed for me with a simple little picture. But I wanna encourage you, God's been paving the way for you all along to discover the Holy Spirit. I don't actually need to teach you anything new. God's already been preparing you, so look out. He's going to use something from your past, (laughs) maybe even this morning, to have it all click for you. But that was it for me, was saying, no, I don't need to depend on the wind I can create with my desire. The Holy Spirit is the wind that's going to move my life. And that really took all the pressure off for me, Mm. was putting up that that sail, his presence with me in the storm. The The door thing was this. I realized that, that same night, the Lord also showed me a picture of my life like a house with a flood rushing through the hallways of my, of my life. Oh, wow. And I felt like the Holy Spirit just said to me, every, every door you open, I'm gonna flood that room. You won't have to do a thing except open the door. That's good. And again, you can see where those themes 
wove together. I was struggling with God's desire for me. I thought I had to desire him. You get where I'm going? And I realized he cannot wait for me to open the doors. Mm. He wants to rush in. And of course, I said, you mean that room that I'm ashamed of? You mean that closet I don't even want to go into? And he said, yeah, that one. You don't even worry about cleaning it up. Just open the door. I'm going to change everything. Wow. And so that's been a working picture for me my whole life. Mm. He stands at the door and knocks. If the door doesn't open, that's on me. Right. I can open the door. But he's Come there, on, he's everybody. Ready. I can open the door. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. But it's just like he rushes in. So there you go. That's yeah. kind of, and it's I just really, literally, I've never looked back. That was the change point. I think I was 19. Yeah, so. that's, that's huge, man. Thank you for sharing that so transparently. And I think that, yeah, absolutely. I think that so many people can, can relate to that. I know I sure can in my personal story, too. But, man, thank you for sharing that. Mr. Moore, what about you, sir? Hey. Um, so, coincidentally, um, probably my... Uh, the first most significant encounter with the Holy Spirit also happened when I was 19. Um, it actually happened in a, a little church in Sussex. We have just up the road, um, hey, Sussex. Um, and what? Dairy Capital. Dairy, dairy Capital. It smells like it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. Anyway, good old Sussex. Um, anyway, my first... Uh, significant encounter with, with the Holy Spirit actually came, um, obviously, when I was 19. And it actually came uh, in a season, it was, the, it was the mid-90s, and there were revivals breaking out um, seemingly across North America. And it happened in this brief little window in our little church in, in Sussex. And there was this. There's this one Sunday morning. Uh, as you do, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, so I was um, I was very familiar with people with their hands in the air. I was very familiar with people speaking in tongues all around me. It was not a weird thing. It was actually very just a part of what you did at going to a little Pentecostal church in in Sussex. Um, and there was the 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 first part of this starts on the Sunday morning, uh, and it, uh, I don't remember what was preached for any of this, but I remember what, what the Holy Spirit did uh, in me in, uh, on that day. And so the Sunday morning, um, as you do, as you did in the 90s, you responded to an altar call. And so as a 19-year-old kid, I walked forward um, and just began to pray about whatever I was praying about, um, but I was posturing my heart to the Lord, and little shoots of electricity began to shoot across the back of my neck, and I took notice, and it took a few of them for me to go through the process of, like, what's happening? Is it just me, and am I making this up? And once I got through that process... Uh, I actually began to feel it a few more times. It was maybe eight, ten times, and then it sort of dissipated. And what I need to tell you is that all this while and during the season, there was such an expectancy in my heart that the Lord was going to move powerfully. Mm. And this, was, this, is, this is my story, and... He began to meet me even in that moment, and that created even more expectancy for later on that night, and this is the 90s. We went to church twice on Sunday in the 90s. Come on. Um, maybe someday. Wow. I, have a way, I have a way different uh, viewpoint of church nowadays. I just love being in the presence of the Lord with the people of God way more than I did when I was 19 or when I was a you know, a teenager, and it felt like he was being, I was being dragged to church. Right. Anyway, that's a rabbit trail. But later on that night in the, in the service, um, also, I don't remember what was preached. I do remember an atmosphere of excitement and passion and fervor for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I do remember that. And 
what had ha what happened was at the end at the end of that service um, I went forward as you do uh, to respond to whatever was preached but I was really responding to the Lord I was really responding to hunger and a desire to encounter him really mm -hmm. and so there was a point when I was standing that I began to feel a certain thing happen to me. And as often you do when you get into these moments, and even this might happen for you today, you, you say, okay, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. And then you're sort of looking around internally, waiting, is there something gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And something may or may not happen. And that was sort of, that was sort of my posture but I began to actually desire the Lord, even outside of looking, feeling like checking myself out to see if something was actually happened. I just began to desire the Lord more, and it almost didn't matter what was happening to me. But then I began to feel the presence of the Lord. I would call it overshadow me. And it was very intense. Like he was very, I should say, he was very intense. And I began to, I began to speak in tongues. Um, I began to just physically um, just, just manifest what the Lord was doing. And that just involved a lot of, you know, you know movements and things like that. But um, that was my first and most powerful encounter with the Lord. And I would say on the other side of that, like something happened in me uh, in that moment. And... If, if I've said the story, sometimes I will say that like this. I was marked in that moment. Mm, I love that. I was marked in yeah. that moment for what the Lord had for me in the rest of, for the rest of my life. I wasn't living perfectly. That's not the point because it's not my performance. It's not how well I'm doing, whether I think I deserve it. But the Lord, it's, it's Jesus, right? The Lord looks, God looks, us, looks at us and he sees Jesus. So he sees the performance of Jesus. So he came in and he met me in my hunger and my passion and my expectancy in that moment. And he marked me in a profound way. And I have not forgotten it. And I was different. I was, there was that moment before and there was the moment afterwards. He marked me. And there was a hunger that was created even in, in that moment, even as a 19-year-old kid, there was a newfound passion for the Lord. I felt lighter than anything. My, my spirit was clean. Like I felt clean, cleaner than I had ever felt uh, to that point in my life. And I loved him. I was passionate about him. And I just wanted to be near him. Uh, and that marked me for, for even to this day. Like I still go back to that place Honestly, as I tell the story, even and share my testimony, like this was a moment um, for for my life that the Lord, lo Holy Spirit, loved me. Mm. It the, the the encounter went on for I don't know how long it went on. It could have been something like th half an hour, twenty minutes, forty five minutes. I don't know. All I know, all I know is when I when when the presence of God lifted, and the moment was done, and I turned around. Um, and I looked, it was like my parents and my pastor sitting in the front row and everyone else had left the building. <laughs> so that. that's, that's, good. Yep. That's, the, that's the story. And it was really, there was a, there was a significant marking point and something was uh, like his fire was placed inside of me and a passion for him was like planted in that day. And even say like it didn't, it didn't get, it wasn't immediately amazing and it's still, there's lots of, uh, there's still lots of struggles, lots of ups and downs, lots of poor choices. But there was something that happened in me that day that even as Pastor Brent has, if, you, if you've heard him preach on the Holy Spirit, says that my spirit, my heart was bent, like inclined towards him mm. and a love for him that happened on that day. Mm. Yeah. That's, That's awesome, my story. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that. And a, a couple of things that I know I can certainly resonate with in my experience and then, and then things I'm hearing sort of kind of bubble up as both of you shared are, are a couple of things like obviously in encounter and those moments and those experiences 
really, really like mark us, like you were saying, Anthony, right? Like, and, and if you've spent any time in church at all, you probably can point to certain points or markers in your life where you've had some kind of encounter that something shifted or something changed or something happened, something clicked or moved for you. And you had that encounter. And the other thing is just like the hunger and the desire, right? Is that God is always faithful to meet us on the other side of our hunger. Like you were talking about the, the hunger and the desire for God to move. And you were saying like that. And if I, I just realized if I, I would crack that door a little bit, that the, that the flood of the Holy Spirit was going to rush in and fill every, every crack and crevice of my life and every room in my house. Like that's, that's huge. And I think that is, even though our experiences may vary, uh, sort of how we get there and how we can encounter him that like those are the things that are consistent for me um, I I was I was also in church when I was in diapers Dan my dad was a pastor and so I grew up being a part of a church whether I liked it or not and uh, when I was old enough to decide what I wanted to do I said I don't know, I have no idea what I want to do except I'm definitely not going to be a pastor I have no idea except I'm definitely not going to be a pastor 100% yes. you could take that to the bank right how'd that work out for As you a, <laughs> well psh. I'm here, and uh, I, did, I was going to be, I was going to go into optometry or pharmacy. That was my thing. I narrowed it down to those two fields, but then when it sort of came down to time to pick a university and high school was over, I was like, well, I, I, I haven't quite decided yet. I'm not sure. And there was a program uh, with Mike McNeil, who many of you many of you may know at Kingswood University in Sussex, Cowtown, smells like manure. And uh, I was like, I'm going to go there and take this one-year program. A friend of mine had done it, and it was so outside of my comfort zone. It was like, it was, it was literally called Extreme Discipleship. All right, and the, the program is like it's called Praxis now. It's kind of evolved, but for me, I was anything except an extreme disciple of Jesus. And so, for me to go and do that was very stretching. And some of the things I learned and experienced over that year really transformed who I was. And I saw some things, and I went some places, went to prisons, and, and all of this stuff, and saw that you know, like the the Spirit was active and moving in all of these different places, and saw these real encounters. And for me, I was like, man, I'd kind of like to have that be a piece of of my life too. I've been in church my whole life but this has not been my experience up to this point. And I can remember like one of the, the very first moments, and again, I've got many encounters I could point to over the years, but, but I, was sitting, I was sitting in uh, uh, a sermon in chapel at, at university in that first year, and I had no idea what I was actually going to do with my life, except I knew that God was, was moving and speaking and revealing new things about himself and his nature to me. And that the pastor was preaching. I don't remember anything he said except at the end. I just felt this like extremely powerful impression and weight of the spirit in my life. And the only thing I remember that the pastor said that night, the preacher said that night was, was what's in your hand. That was like the challenge. Like what, what is in your hands that you can use and you can leverage for the kingdom? And I remember sitting there and just going, man, I have, I have no idea still. Like, I don't know if I want to like go into like the, the medical field or, or whatever. Like I really wanted to do something that made a ton of money. And uh, so I'm sitting there like wrestling through, wrestling through all of that. And then he said like, what's in your hand? And that was my moment. I was like, God, I don't know what this is going to look like. I hope it doesn't mean me being a pastor, but I was like, whatever that looks like, Father, like I'm, I'm, I'm ready now to submit and to surrender that to you. And I want to see, I want to walk with you in this yeah. and I want to see what this looks like. And uh, I mean, that was the beginning. It was, it was a huge turning point in my journey for me of yeah. seeing, seeing you know, what he began to do and speak into my life. Once I was willing to have that surrender moment to say, okay, God, whatever I've got in my hands is yours and you can take it, you can use it. Turns out he did want me to be a pastor and so went through that and uh, I transferred into some more pastoral kind of programs after that. But it's so, something else that I think might be helpful, guys, is that like there's, there's something within all of us when we, when we have those kind of moments and encounters or the invitation is there. Like you were saying, Dan, about opening the door, like there's, there's a resistance in us sometimes that as humans and as just people or whatever it is that that sort of that sort of pushes back against this, isn't yeah. there? And I know that like there certainly was for me, um, and I don't know whether it's that like our tendency, like okay, we we know the spirit is important and we want the Holy Spirit involved in our lives, but we want to set the parameters for what yeah. that's going to look like. And so that resistance, I think, is I don't think it's just me. I don't think it's just us. I think that's probably kind of the human condition. Like, what's it look like to kind of wrestle through that resistance and find that surrender? Because that's where the real kind of encounter and work of the Holy Spirit and filling of the Holy Spirit happens is on the other side of us working through that resistance. Yeah, uh, I just want to. I just want to just jump on a couple of things that you said there. Like, I really feel like hunger is so key and so important. Like, in hunger, yeah. perseverance and surrender 
right? Like it's like there's something really important about that dynamic. And it's like I don't know if you are hungry this morning and, and hungry for more of the Lord and hungry to encounter him. That's amazing and it's really important. The, the, the one caveat is that I don't know how long that season of hunger will last for you. That could be a week, a day, a moment. It could be uh, uh, years. Mm. I, know, I know of some people that have, have sought the Lord and sought for more of him for years. Mm. And it's really about, but I think it's what it is. The promise is, is hit, that he will meet you at the end of your hunger. Yeah, exactly. And if you are hungry enough to surrender fully, completely, and say, here is my whole life, Lord. And there are moments when that is honest and there's moments when that is in faith. And it's like, I think he uses both, but he will, just, he will just say, like, there's a moment when you just are willing to just die to yourself and everything that you want and completely just lay yourself before the Lord and say, here I am, come and move in my heart. Mm-hmm. And I just want to, I just really feel like that's just an important, that's an important thing to say. There's hunger, there's perseverance, and there's surrender in this, this, um, in this journey with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so good. Um, yeah, absolutely, Anthony. And I was just uh, thinking through too. If if you want to like examine the Holy Spirit, church, like you can go to Acts chapter one, Acts chapter two, when Jesus had ascended back to heaven and left his apostles in charge. One of the things that really strikes me is that like I kind of had this revelation that you know as amazing and incredible as Jesus was and if you watch the chosen if you haven't watched the chosen you should because it's it's amazing but it gives you so much more appreciation for Jesus and his followers and what it looked like to follow really walk in tandem with Jesus in those days but Jesus actually said in, in the gospel of John 16 7 he said very truly I tell you it is good for you that I'm going away Right. And you imagine like what that would have been like as his disciples there in that moment. He said, it's actually good for you that I'm leaving. It's good for you that I'm going back to heaven. Because unless I go away, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And then, then there's also that familiar passage where Jesus told his disciples, us, his church. He said, you're going to do even greater things than you've seen me do in my name. And if Jesus, like that, that kind of revelation right there, Jesus said it. Like if he hadn't left then it wouldn't have left room for the Holy Spirit to come right. and move. Like, like we would have been more locked in geographically to Jesus' ministry. Like if it was all on one guy and one, one, one you know, God in man, but one man that had to walk that out. Like when he left, all of a sudden now the Holy Spirit is, is present and active all over the world, across the globe immediately, and it's spread like wildfire, right? And that's, that's, that's huge, I think. And then for some of us too, like I, and even as we get ready to pray here in just a couple of moments, that... That I think would have experienced, would have experienced. Uh, you know, we we hear other people share their stories, or maybe you sit here today and you hear us talk about you know what our experience has been, and there's that piece of us that goes, man, that that sounds incredible, and I believe for that, or maybe I believe that some people experience that, but I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not sure if that's true for me. And Dan, what would you say to someone like that that maybe is feeling that or even wrestling through that right now in this moment that would say like I've Maybe I've been in church my whole life, and maybe I've never had that kind of real, authentic encounter or those kind of stories that I've seen it true in other people's lives, but maybe I've never seen it kind of come to fruition in my life. Yeah, like what kind of what kind of hope would you give someone who yeah, well, is maybe there? Yeah, something you said, Andy, in your story, just three words that I loved. I'm ready now. That's good. Mm, I love that. I'm ready now. That's a great prayer right mm. there. And God... God knows the moments. He knows the moments he's experiencing with you. And I think it's so important for people to realize no one can come to the Father except the Spirit draws him. Mm. Like no one can come to know God unless this very Holy Spirit we're talking about draws him. So if you have an interest and a hunger and a desire to know God in any way, the Holy Spirit is already working with you. So I just want to encourage you. you. You know, there's many voices within our own head, and we know that there's dark powers in the world that want to lie to us or out to destroy us. Mm. And, and those voices want to tell you that if you have not had this kind of experience we're talking about, that you don't know the Holy Spirit at all. But I want to tell you, the Holy, 
the Holy Spirit knows you intimately yeah. and has already been working with you, already walking with you. But he is bringing you to a point where the stakes are going to be high enough, uh, the things are going to align just right. I don't know how to express it to you, but you will come to a point, and you may be there this morning, where it's, I'm ready now. Mm. And it will be your experience, and God's not going to let you down in that. And so I want to encourage you that, that this God that's drawing you longs for you to experience him. Uh, and so really, you won't have my experience because it's mine. It's good. I won't have your experience because it's yours. And the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit is that he actually unites us all together. And if you get blessed, it's a blessing to me. Yeah. If you get blessed with your experience of the Holy Spirit, guess what? I get to benefit from that. Amen. So we're not separate off little individuals. So you don't need to be afraid of this process. The one who's drawing you knows how to create your moment. And so really, all you need to do is say yes. If he's showing you a door to open, open it. Yeah. And rest in that. Yeah, yeah I just, I just want to throw out this question um, that I th think I heard this week. And it was so succinct and so profound and powerful. This, I just want to read it here. Do you, do you, everyone in the sound of my voice, really think that kingdom life is possible outside the activity of the Holy Spirit working in you and through you? Uh, no. <laughs> like, do you think it's possible? Do you really think that kingdom life is possible outside of the activity of the Holy Spirit working in you and through you. Mm. And the measure to which we surrender to the Holy Spirit is the measure, is the measure by which kingdom life happens in you and through you. And there's no getting around that. There's actually no getting around that. We try to come up and say, oh, I'll just behave this way. I'll just do this thing. I'll do my job and I'll compartmentalize everything. I'll come to church. No, I want to say to you, the Holy Spirit is jealous this morning for complete, whole, unequivocal surrender. Amen. That is what he's jealous for this morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that. Like there's no holding on to what I think my life should be, though your life may, it may be good things. There's no holding on to that. The Holy Spirit is jealous for you all this morning, for me, for, for Pastor Dan, and for, for uh, Pastor Andy. He's jealous for us to surrender wholly and unequivocally to him. It's the only way that the kingdom life is possible. It's the only way that the fruit of the Spirit is possible. Yeah. It's the only way that our, our friends and our family and our neighbors are impacted by the power of God. Mm. It's that surrender. It's that moving in us and through us. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's so incredibly true, man. And that's perfect because this is where we need to be right now in this moment is that like there all the things that we talk about as a church and as a family and the as for me and my house and all of that like cannot happen cannot exist outside of us being filled with and fueled by the holy spirit and i don't know if your background was similar to mine where it was a conservative very conservative very straight laced kind of church background upbringing like there are there are things that god calls us to and I'm walking out in our relationship with Jesus. Like it is not, the Holy Spirit is not just a nice bonus add-on. It's not like, right. it's not like sometimes we think it's like, it's like next level. Like, right? I, can, I can do, I can hang with Jesus and the Father for a little bit. And then like, I can, like the Holy Spirit is only for some certain select people. It's like, no, 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 no. Like this is for all of us. This is foundational work. This is not, it is not optional. 
It is not optional for us to go any further as King's Church and not be living our lives by the Spirit and fueled by the Spirit. And something that we know is true, and even as we prepare to pray into this today, and you're going to have an, oppor- an opportunity, if you've, maybe you feel like I've never experienced that before, to even extend your hands and just say, Holy Spirit, I want you to fill me today. I want you to encounter me today. I want you to move powerfully in my life today and moving forward. That, that there's just something that, we, something that we need you to know is that your level of hunger determines your, your experience with the Holy Spirit. It really does. Yeah. Because if you're not hungry, if you don't authentically desire it, then it's the same with the gift of salvation, right? Like the, the Jesus died so that you had a choice. You have free will. You, you get to, you either open the door to bring it back to what you were saying in the beginning, Dan, or you close it even tighter, right? And your level of hunger and your desire for God to move is going to going to dictate your experience today. And, and for some of us, maybe, maybe that prayer today is, Honestly, God, I'm, I'm not hungry right now. Honestly, I am not hungry for your spirit to fill. Honestly, I am content with where I'm at right now. I'm content with the safety and the, the, how comfortable I am with my faith and all of this journey. But maybe something's being stirred in your heart and your mind today that maybe your prayer is just as simple as, I'm not hungry, but I want to be hungry. Like I desire that hunger. I desire more. I desire for you to reveal yourself to me to me, Holy Spirit, and uh, so we're going to pray here this morning, and uh, Anthony's, Anthony's going to lead us in this, and we're going to turn it over to, to all the location pastors, so uh, Pastor Adam at West, Seth in Halifax, Johnny in Charlottetown, and anybody who's turning, tuning in online, um, I'm going to turn you over to Pastor Ron, our online pastor, and at every location, everywhere anyone's tuning in today, we're going to have uh, a specific, you know, honed-in moment for us to invite the Holy Spirit to move and to encounter us. So even as we're even as we're making that transition now, and as Anthony leads us, I just want to invite you to invite you to stand, no matter where you're at, no matter what location you're at, just to go ahead and stand right now in this moment, and uh, as we prepare, just to begin to pray together.